Hi, everyone. Welcome to Arts for the Health of It. I'm your host, Richard Wilmore. And I'm your other host, Constanza Rader. And we have some really fun guests with us today. We have Michelle Burke and Lalamini De Silva with us today. And they are on a mission to help you create more joy in your life. And we're excited to talk with them because they have some really practical resources to share with you um, that's backed by some awesome research, too. Yes. I have a question then for you, Stanzi, since we're talking about joy, is oh what is the last thing that oh, brought no. you joy? Oh, okay. I thought you were going to ask yeah. about my alliteration that you hate. <laughs> no, no, no. Not the joy <laughs> generators. That's a different, that <laughs> he, is a different hates... podcast episode. Okay. See, joy generators, I just think that's that's great. It just has such musicality. Anyway, he hates it. That's fine. That can be uh, your next album title. Okay, great. So when it's just yes. my project. Yes. Um, what was your question? What was the last thing that brought me joy? Yeah. Ooh. Mm, 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 mm. Um, watching Lalamini struggle with her um camera brought me so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> so just as a warning for everybody who's watching, um <laughs> Lalamini can't get her camera to work, and she could get it to work, but it looked like this, and she was upside down. <laughs> Uh, so she will be doing this interview, not as a bat, but as a black screen when she's out here. But I mean, I thought it'd be great for her to do it as, you know, Mary Poppins, I but I think it's, it would bring people joy if she could figure I, it I, out. I think so too. I, it, it's just so relatable. We've all been there with our tech mishaps. <laughs> so. Thankfully she has a beautiful voice, so we'll just get to listen to her. Exactly. And, um, yeah, and we won't be able to see her. But Michelle is in full view in camera with a beautiful bookshelf behind her. And I'm kind of jealous of her background. <laughs> well, um, you want to introduce them, Richard? Yes, I want to tell you. I want to show you what brought me joy recently, though, first. Oh, yes. I'm uh, sorry. Because I completely... That's okay. I completely... I didn't even tell you we were doing this. So uh, <laughs> I completely forgot about this while I was in the hospital. But I had someone send a video, a teacher friend of mine... Uh, and I was going through, I think, my phone. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I forgot about this. And so I just want to show you. You have seen this because you were in the video. But this brought me a tremendous amount of joy recently. Oh, no. Good morning, Richard. I hope you're feeling well. I just wanted to let you know that I did have planned to come and visit you in the hospital. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it over the weekend. And I don't know if I'll be able to make it this week, but I wanted you to know I was talking to my students last week about that I was going to come visit you. And a couple of my students wanted to make you cards. So I'm sending you a video in case I don't get there. But this particular one is from Philip. And as you can see, he was real creative. And when you open it up, it says, get well, hope you feel better. And he drew you a little puppy. And I have another card. Also from Aislinn, she said she wanted to draw you a picture and she wanted to know, she wanted you to know that it was from her <laughs> and she says, hope you feel better soon, stay safe and she drew this, it's our logo and I just wanted, I hope it brings a smile to your face and that you'll be feeling better and rested and just wanted you to know you were on our minds and our hearts. I, and that's so cute. That's so cute. Little strangers made me cards while I was in the hospital, and it did bring me joy. And then I, I mean, I cried for the first five times I watched it, but it was so cute. <laughs> and so, if you're, I know. So, if you're listening to it, go on our YouTube channel or Facebook and look at the video of the cards that they made. All right, that was it. Okay. Also, what brings me joy is that I'm all, I'm down to one bandage. I got yes. rid of my chest bandage yesterday. I no longer have to have that. And my leg is cleared and my, so we're, we're two more things, my hand and my arm and then back to normal life. We're getting there. We're getting there. I promise. All right. So um, they'll tell you all about how they met, but Michelle and Lil Lilamani, wow, I need more coffee, are two women from vastly different cultures. Uh, and they came together. I feel like kind of how we came together, like complete randomness. And they've created this beautiful product called Joy Cards. And so we're going to start the show and talk to them. Um, all about, look, this is what they are, the Joy oh, Cards. They sent beautiful. me a copy of them. And they're just, like beautiful and amazing. So uh, should we bring them out? Let's start Let's do the it. show. Come along with me and I know you'll see that a song changes everything. Oh, 
that it's not it's a little distracting. It feels like some like Big Brother's watching us in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's hello, very ladies. Nice. <laughs> Welcome hello, to the hello. program. Hello. I want to start with how the story of how you two met, um, where you were at, how you met, how you connected, and then where where you thought the need for for joy cards came from, and why you decided to make it. Wow, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> Just all the things. Answer those and then it's over. <laughs> Let's go. All right, I'd say, <laughs> I'd say um, serendipitous meeting, wasn't it, Michelle? We, um, I was there uh, working for Discovery, uh, filming at the time, and Michelle will tell her own story. Oh, all righty then. Was uh, I was that's how they met. <laughs> <laughs> And that wraps it up, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Good Discovery time. Channel. Bye. It's been a lot of fun. Um, no, I we actually met in Seattle, Washington. I was a keynote for Microsoft's Worldwide Conference. And as Lalomni was saying, she was producing for Discovery. And we met through a friend. And the minute we met, it was like this instant connection. And the thing that brought us together right away was our what we call our ruckus laughter. We both love to laugh and we are not ashamed to laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it's that's, essential, that's isn't really it? How, that's how we met and we, we discovered that we actually have a lot in common despite the fact that I'm from the US and she's from New Zealand and lives part-time in London. And hmm. here we are from you know completely different places and yet we have all this and we have like our growing up, we have some similarities. We, our passions are, what else, Lalamini? We, our mission in life. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Our mission in life. <laughs> we have a similar purpose, don't we? We want to um, make a difference, I think, to do something for the wider world, which is how the joy cards came about as well. Um, Maybe that's why your camera's upside down because you're in New Zealand. Ah, it US. explains it all. Just it is, it is. I'm on the other side of the world. Well, I'm not now, actually. I'm presently in London, so. No, never mind but... then. <laughs> that was a good theory. Sorry. It has <laughs> been an interesting ride, I have to say. It's, it, what's interesting is, is you may have, um, you know, sometimes Michelle and I, I think our friendship has grown over the last 20 years. It's been an, a, a very powerful friendship, actually, that has endured because we've worked together for a very long time. But we are so very different as well, but you know, you can make things work. I mean, sometimes I do believe, you know, we speak a different language. <laughs> I might speak, you know, we think we're speaking French or something, but because we come from such different angles, but we are also very similar. So that's been a big bond actually, and a hmm. reason for doing what we've done over the years. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. What did, so you guys met Sparks Blue best friends for life. And how, so how did you get from there to these joy cards? Well, that happened during the pandemic. So I got a bad case of COVID and Lalamini was in New Zealand uh, taking care of her parents. And we were, I mean, like everybody else, we were in lockdown and stressed out and wondering what the trick was going on. Like how long was this going to last? And right. Like it was so bizarre. And you know, I know I was super stressed and worried and I know she was too. And we, so we were like, how do we help ourselves? Like get our joy back, like figure out a way to like focus on things that are positive rather than all the things that were in the news and, and what was going on in the world. And so we challenged each other to do something that brought us joy. And that kind of kicked it off, you know, the start of the, of, of, how joy cards came to be was just us finding our own joy again. And then through that, we thought, Hey, this is, this helped us. Maybe we could do something that could help others find their joy and get their joy back. And the joy cards came about, right? Well, Yeah. I mean, I suppose you can say that's history because yeah. Uh, and also I've been painting and you know, the joyous things in my life and I've been painting for a very long time, probably as a, as a child forever. And I think that was, uh, you don't realize 
that it's a natural gift. You just assume it's something that you do. And I think that that too is where the creativity and, you know, arts for health, you know, you don't realise that what you're doing and what talents you have are talents, actually. And so I think over the years, Michelle has noticed that I, you know, I, I had a lot of paintings under my bed and <laughs> they're just sitting there aimlessly. I always thought I would sort of probably die with all my paintings on top of me, sort of like Van Gogh. <laughs> Not <laughs> dramatic in any way, apparently. <laughs> but um, we, we sort of saw the, um, the two come together, really, the two align with um, concept of words and actions and, you know, how, how it had made us feel, the good stuff, you know, what we call the good stuff, the joyful stuff, which you need to throw into life, really. Otherwise, you just can't get through the tough stuff. <laughs> without mm. the good stuff mm. i'm just thinking now that you said this came about during the pandemic which has not been around for that long and i'm looking at they were nice enough to send me uh the joy cards and i'm looking at all of these every card in here has custom artwork and there's of course a glare uh because we can't do anything without a ring light now uh <laughs> But, okay, well, that's not helpful. Um, I'll just put that up. Like, all of these cards have different artwork. How long did this take, then, to actually come together? I mean, these this is not just, like, a quick little design. These are, like, intricate paintings on the back of each of these cards. Well, Alamity actually did a lot of these beforehand. That's why I had suggested let's use her artwork instead of, like, a graphic designer, you know, mm -hmm. coming up with something that would be on the back. And I do have some of the cards. I could probably show some too, Richard, if you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, see, this is difficult. Yeah, we can yeah. do we can do a, a dual thing. Oh, there pretty. We we'll take photos and put them on our social media too. Yeah, they really nice. they're gorgeous. She's, I mean, she really is talented. Like, there's just like. She's genuinely gifted. And but so I love that I, we're talking about her like she's not here because she's I know. I, <laughs> I do that because she, she's embarrassed sometimes. And yeah. I'm like, what the if I had a talent like this, I'd be like, you know, hello, look at me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she's she really and I, I'm look at this. They're we did take all. we did take two years actually though to put it all together. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh, I think we thought either. we were guided in some way because we we managed to get in a hold of a publisher quite quickly and that doesn't happen every day. Hmm. In yeah. fact, it's a very rare thing. So um, we definitely had an idea of what how we'd like it to look. Hmm. Um, and I did. We did. We painted. We wrote. I mean, we, we worked from afar. You know, I worked from New Zealand and Michelle is in, uh, is in the US. So we always, you know, Google and all the modern technology that we have today has helped us create what we've so created. Good at cameras and <laughs> like, taking advantage of all the things. You yeah. can imagine I how know. Richard it, it's been looking at her upside down or black <laughs> screen this whole time. You don't even know what she actually looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, can you kind of explain to everybody, like, because they're all numbered. So yes. in your head, or do you go in order of them? Do you go rent like? Do you, is it like a deck of cards? Pick a card, any card. I want to know how do you like? How do you think I? How you think I should use them? Well, I think you should use them any way you like to use them. That that they were actually designed to use in multiple ways, right? Like it's there isn't just one way to use them, which is what makes it I think more fun. Is you could just randomly pick a card, Richard, right now, like you know. Wait, I'm gonna do it. Right. Okay. I. Okay. Ready? Um, oh, are you? Am I picking your card or one of mine? You're picking one of yours, but we're okay. pretending like you're picking one of mine. I picked number <laughs> eleven. Ooh, oh. stay for a rainy day. Love it. Wow. So it's, it's, I. You go, and you, the card. Do you like the health benefits of what? Is happening what you're supposed to do with the card so it's all like this little it's so exciting for me i love it um because each one has a health benefit can you, can we talk about that a little bit like what what they actually do for yeah. you like lowering stress and preventing burnout stuff like that yeah could you give us some examples of what may might be on the cards and their corresponding health benefits 
you want me to read some of them? I don't know. Sure. Okay. Lomini, do you have your guidebook handy? I do. I do. Why don't we each pick one and read? Okay. Here's Stancy. Do you want to pick one? Yeah. Um, I'll take pick a number seven. one through. Thank you very pick much. a number. Pick a number, and I'll 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 send you a picture of it. Seventeen. Oh, yeah. One through forty-eight. Of course, I do. put it in Slack because I don't have my phone right here. Okay. <laughs> so pick a number between one and forty-eight. You said seventeen. Seventeen. Oh, seventeen. Okay. Oh, you're gonna like this one. Oh, great. Perfect. I'm excited. Good. I know. I love games. And I love art <laughs> and I love joy. Like these are all things that I, <laughs> I love. So these guys are a reminder really of how to, you know, bring back joy and to really have fun again, really. I think yours is a handmade gift. Your mm. card, card, number 17. Handmade oh, it gift. is. Oh, yes. Yes. It's and about creating and you, uh, yeah, creating and a lasting memory. Well, that Richard is correct. That is one that I would like. Yeah, Can we maybe, true. maybe like as a way to intro talking about the specifics in the cards, like, well, maybe this is going too far, the wrong direction. Well, not the wrong direction. Why do you think this is so, why do you think we need to be reminded mm. of how to create joy in our lives? I, I think it's because we're just so caught up, you know, we're so busy being busy and stressed. I mean, our stress levels are higher than they've ever been in U.S. history, literally, um, based on all the things that are going on in the world. And I think people don't have healthy coping strategies. And so we lose sight of what's joyful, what's fun, what's, you know, what, what brings us joy, or we don't even think we have time for it. Like somehow we think we have to just check off all these to do's, you know, and, and get things done as opposed to taking time for ourselves and saying, wait a second. What did I do when I was a kid? I mean, a lot, Lalamini, like when we started out, what were so, we each challenged each other when we started out to do things that were different, that brought us joy. And we had to go back and think about, oh, yeah, what are the things that make us feel good, right? It makes us feel good when we're joyful. And it's also contagious, right, Lalamini? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. So it's like, it's, um, it's a way of releasing stress, obviously, but lightening your mood. And making yourself feel better on a daily basis you know it's um we we say um joy makes the busy day better because we mm. all think we don't have enough time <laughs> you know we don't have 15 minutes or even 30 minutes to to give ourselves something back you know we have to give ourselves permission to have fun it's a very odd thing but it's almost like we have to give ourselves permission and there's a, mm. a, a you know we feel like we have to be busy all the time but busy doing what i'm not too sure but um you know, and, and it's not busy taking care of yourself or busy having a pamper or busy doing something creative, something that you've had on your, like you say, on your dream list for years or something like that. But, yeah, you just forget. You just forget how important it is to give back to yourself. Mm. Yeah, I think I read somewhere something like overworking yourself should not be a badge of honor. Yes, yeah. exactly. You, yeah. should, you know, like that should not be what you brag about. Like, oh, my gosh, I worked 16 hours today. Well, that's <laughs> and that's what's so weird. What you just said, it's it literally is like an epidemic of that. Like we've we especially in America, we we do take all this pride in how many hours we've worked a day or if we if we skipped lunch during the day. It's like, oh, my gosh, what it how crazy is this? You know, mm -hmm. that I know in my coaching practice, trying to get people to get out of their office during their day to go take a walk or to go have lunch is like literally trying to unglue somebody from their chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think there's, I know sometimes when I resist doing things that are fun and pleasurable and joyful, there's this narrative in my head that's saying, oh, you don't have time for that. Or, oh, that's frivolous. Or, oh, you should be doing yeah. something more important. But when I take time to do that thing, the irony is I am more productive. <laughs> yes. like it, it lightens everything feels everything feels lighter and it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm just like trudging through my day. Like um, and I think it's hard. 
I think once you can get people over that first, like, hey, just like try this, just try it. Here's a really accessible way to try it. These joy cards are a good option and just see what happens. Like do a little experiment. You're going to, you're, you're going to lose three minutes of your day and you know, and then if it doesn't work fine, but try it. I think that's a, a big, you know, inviting play back into our lives is so important. Yeah. Well, and this gives you, for people who are maybe nervous about trying it, this gives you what, 48 options. So you, like you said, like you can pick which one, go through them and pick like, oh, I'm comfortable with this one to start out with. And this is what I think I can do today. And then once you realize like, oh, that was, that was joyful or that, that really helps my day, then maybe you can kind of expand uh, and maybe do something a little bit more difficult the next time on one of the cards, which I think is cool. We yeah, also we divided them. Sorry, we, 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 oh, we divided them into four areas, like the mind, body, heart, and soul, oh. because we thought that people, you know, people have different areas that they might need work working on. You know, if your mind is hyperactive, maybe you mm. need to calm it down, and maybe there are ways that you can calm it down with some of the cards. Or if you haven't had any you know, a interaction with your family or heart connections. So we talk about heart connections, you know, flirting a little bit, learning how to flirt. And Michelle has a story about the love letter, you know, writing a love letter. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that, but it can change your your whole perspective, your life, you know. So, I mean, Michelle, you could tell a little story about the love letter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She just put you on the spot, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, well, it, it's actually, it was during a team building that I was doing and what the activity was to have everybody take 15 minutes and do something that you could not use your phone or your computer. So no technology. And everybody was walking around like, well, what are we going to do with ourselves for 15 minutes? You would have thought I told them to go run a marathon and then come back. And this one gentleman who was an engineer sat down and wrote a love letter to his wife during the 15 minutes. And the next day he came back and said, I cannot believe what a difference this love, love letter made. He has, it sparked something new in our 20 year marriage. My wife was overwhelmed with joy. And she reminded me that I used to write love letters to her when we first were married. And then I just stopped. And the whole room completely just com broke down. I mean, it was just like applause. And I mean, yeah. It's and so something crazy. so small that takes no time really had such a huge lasting impact and, a, and made such a big difference. And that's the beauty of joy. Mm -hmm. It's something, something so small can have an everlasting impact. Mm. Positively. I love that. And it's joy is really uh, essential or at the core of our mission at Heart Scene Art too. You know, in our mission, we even say our mission is to create moments of joy, mm. self-expression and connection. We just happen to do it with people facing serious illness and those who care for them. Um, but it what we it's what we hear time and time again from our the people that we work with is I couldn't like I was skeptical about this at first, but I couldn't believe how much it changed my whole day. Just the few minutes we spent with them or, the you know, listening to their favorite song while they were in their room or having a moment to make a window painting or whatever, whatever that little spark is that it, it can, it does, it can, it can change, it can change everything. And we so undervalue these little moments of joy. Um, and something I love about what you guys have made is, you know, throughout, so throughout human history, we, and we talk about this on the podcast, um, a few, we've talked about it a few times, but throughout human history, we've used the process of artification in order to, um, highlight things that are important and special and essential for human survival. We create ritual around it. We create cultural artifacts around these these things and we don't really have good cultural artifacts in in the west in the united states to cultivate joy in our everyday lives and so I, it, like what this this is a tool in that toolbox right of how do we create personal ritual rhythm artification around creating moments of joy in our own individual 
lives and in our rhythm? How do we operationalize? That's the word that Brene Brown uses when talking about like values. Like how do you, you say this is what you value. Okay. You value joy. How do you operationalize that? And how does that look when you're, you know, um, how does that look in your everyday life? And here you've put, put that tool in someone's hand. And I think that's really powerful. Yeah. And you've artified it. You made it so pretty. <laughs> In the exactly. tiniest little box. And, so it's <laughs> exactly. And I think I think um, it's amazing. I think when you're going through the toughest times in your life, you actually need more joy mm. to get you through that tough time. And I think we forget that because we think that we have to suffer. You know, suffering is, is, is a sort of, a you know, if you're going through grief, you feel like you need to go through the grief and you need to be, you know, thoroughly unhappy, you know, sad, but you can balance your sadness with, with happiness at all times. There needs to be some sort of balance. Mm. Um, I think it just helps mm. in the long term. Yeah. I remember when I first started at Hearts Need Art, uh, when I would go into the hospitals, I thought, oh, this is going to be the most depressing, saddest place. <laughs> you know, when we worked with oncology patients and mm. uh, you, I went in and there's still people who want to laugh and have joy and play. And I was like, oh, OK, I can do this. Like if it's, it's you have this image when you're not in it of, of what suffering looks like or what, you know, pain looks like. But they, there's still people trying to live their lives. And part of that is still laughing and having joy. So I think yeah. it's even even a pure, pure like unadulterated, unabashed joy that I think we get to see in the hospital that you wouldn't expect. But people are just busted wide, op wide open by um, by illness, by what they've lost, that it sometimes breaks things open in them and frees them in some way to embrace what's really important important and yeah. um joy is one of those things that yeah. rises to the top where I can people oh sorry go well i was just gonna say what you just said was so powerful because both alumni and i have had a lot of loss in our life and I, I can only speak for myself but i would say that it certainly has made me more acutely aware of time mm -hmm. and and relationships and how to like live your life to the fullest, you know, like to take advantage of those moments and what you just said about moments. I mean, that's, we, we hope that the joy cards allow people to experience more of those moments. You know, we can't, we can't tell people, Oh, take an hour or two or whatever, because it's, it messes with your mind to think that, Oh my gosh, I've got to carve out all this time to do this. No, it could be simply, you know, we talk about the joy gems, it's the little simple pleasures and, and, and paying attention to those small things like drinking your coffee in the morning and actually tasting it, like mm. <laughs> noticing like, oh, yeah, it's not just the coffee, like the caffeine that I'm trying to like, you know, drink down or or appreciating the hot shower, you know, or, or as Lalamni and I both love, we have nieces and nephews and hearing their their laughter, you know, mm. like and just the giggle and then their laughter makes you laugh. And, you know, it's like. Those small things, just taking a moment to really appreciate and savor them, because mm. those are the things in the big scheme and the small scheme of life that, at least for me, matters more than anything. And if you can mm. add more of those in to your day to day, then then your life changes. It, it, it literally changes. Oh, so good. And I, I think it's it's one of the tragedies within our culture when you get swept up and I think we get swept up in trying to get somewhere. And I think what we see a lot with people that we work with that are end of life, especially they look back and they realize that they had what they wanted all along. They just didn't mm. take time in the moment to mm -hmm. take, to take in those moments. Like we're just hurrying. So we're like working so hard to get, to get somewhere. We don't even have it well-defined and we're missing heavenly moments along along the way um so i appreciate you guys and your work this invitation to all of us to really fully live in those those joyful moments that happen in our everyday in the quiet and just the the average moments are beautiful and exploding with with joy yeah where can people order the joy cards 
uh, they can get them on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, or they can check out their local, you know, bookstores or places and ask and see if they if they're carrying them. I think Target as well. Um, I... Oh, oh, nice. Well, if Target has it, then. I don't know why that. I don't know why the hits different, but something about being. Oh, or just ask anyway. <laughs> Guess I they were too. <laughs> Where are your joy cards? <laughs> <laughs> They just start handing them out to the employees. <laughs> <laughs> I have thought about that question. <laughs> that would be, I know. That'd be really great to have. They'd be helping us tremendously. <laughs> of course. We do have so uh, maybe, some people who have t told us that they keep them on their desk now. And when people come into their office, they're picking mm. a card. And Aww. that's a way to spread joy because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to hope, hopefully give people opportunity to spread joy. Love it. Beautiful. How can people best connect with both of you? Through Michelle's website, actually, Energy Catalyst Group. You can send a little message. Or we do have um, various uh, Facebook page for Joy Path as well. Awesome. We'll put all those in the show notes too, so you have easy access to that. Um, I love this. I know you also, before we leave, because we're almost out of time, I know you have an event on June 11th that I want to make sure you get to talk about. Oh, that's right. That at the Empower. <laughs> <laughs> Let me remind you. <laughs> um, we'll have to send you that information, the link uh, to that, because I don't have that handy, but I know we're doing it on June 11th. And I think our it's a whole day of helping people just feel more empowered. And, all, and ours is obviously our segment is on joy. How to how to look yeah. for the joy gems. <laughs> That's awesome. And we'll I think we are, Michelle and I have uh, have hopes of um, running a few retreats. But um, so if people are interested, please um, come to our website and tell us you want to join. And we've got a few retreats maybe in uh, October, September, October time. And if you awesome. need musicians or artists or writers for these <laughs> retreats, I know an organization know. that is available. Oh, wonderful. That would be fun. Just throwing that out there. Because I like to travel. All right. <laughs> Thank you both. Uh, so uh, speaking of joy, you both have brought me so much. I was like panicking five minutes before we st I jumped on here trying to figure all of this out. And then I don't even care anymore because you two were just so fun. <laughs> so fun. So you're my joy cards for today is what I'm saying. Oh, no. Uh, Agreed. And you're ours. <laughs> oh, stop. Oh. You're rolling your eyes. We can't see you. You're lying. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. And I can okay, attest yeah. to that. You guys are great. Like, it's, it's been really fun. Oh, well, really, we really, really. enjoyed and, having and you guys it's on. It's such a wonderful thing you're both doing, actually. Yeah, well, thank really. you. It is. Thanks. Yeah, we need more people oh. like you in the world. That's right. <laughs> I'll edit that part out before I put it's it on for you guys. No. <laughs> we don't want those words going around. It in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe wherever you're doing all of that stuff. And we will be back next week with more episodes. Take care, everyone. Keep creating. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to Arts for the Health of It, a podcast produced by Hearts Need Art, creative support for patients and caregivers in partnership with the National Organization for Arts and Health. You can help others learn about the healing power of the arts by subscribing, sharing, and reviewing the podcast wherever you listen or watch. The podcast is hosted by Richard Wilmore, co-hosted by Constanza Rader. Our theme song, Songbird, is written and performed by Natalie Lane. Visit heartsneedart.org to learn how you can support our mission to create joy with people facing life-altering health challenges. Join us next week to learn more ways you can create arts for the health of it. The views expressed on this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of Hearts Need Art, their staff, board members, or other affiliates. All content is created for informational purposes only. This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice or to diagnose and treat any health condition. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health professional with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you heard on this podcast.